Good afternoon. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist, especially remembered at today's Mass, all of our parishioners. Please stand to greet our celebrant with today's entrance antiphon. Today you will know that the Lord will come and he will save us, and in the morning you will see his glory. Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas, blessed Christmas, happy new year to all. To begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We prepare to offer the Mass by calling to mind our own sins, asking God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption grant that just as we jo joyfully welcome your only begotten son as our redeemer we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be, you shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. 
For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul, and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am, not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, the Lord be with you. In the reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. 
The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Most, I'm sure, if not um, all of us have heard the uh, Christmas story, which I just read from uh, the infancy narrative of Luke many times before. And the uh, repetition, uh, sometimes I think, uh, while having the benefit of giving us familiarity with the story, also puts us in a position of being uh, almost desensitive to it because we've heard it so many times before. And unfortunately, in that case, we can lose the essential message of this gospel reading. And of course, what Christmas is all about. I read something a while ago, which uh, stayed with me, and which helps me anyway to keep focus on exactly what is Christmas all about in terms of that essential message. This is a story about a company that was um, looking for uh, to hire a consulting agency uh, to help them with uh, the procedures for their business to see if they could come up with some efficiencies or procedures that would be uh, enhancing to their business operations. They interviewed uh, a number of uh, highly qualified agencies, at least they presumed they were, and they gave very professional uh, analyses uh, with, uh, with great substantiation of their resume, etc. And uh, finally, there was a, a small agency that came, and uh, much to the surprise of the, the committee, came into the, the room, and all they did was they placed a pair of dirty boots on the table right in front of the committee. You can imagine the reaction of, of the people on the committee when seeing this. When they were asked to explain that, one of the, the speakers said, we will look into every aspect of your business. We will immerse, our, immerse ourselves in your, all the activities that you have. We will uh, learn everything we possibly can about your business. We will not only get our dirts, our, our boots dirty, but our hands dirty as well before we give you any recommendations for the future. Shortly afterward, that agency was chosen unanimously by the committee. Now the reason I say that is because to me, that reminds me of exactly what we speak about with the incarnation of Jesus. He came into this world taking on our human nature, completely immersed himself in our nature with all of its vulnerability and fragility. He uh, got his hands dirty as a son of a carpenter. He reached out and touched the untouchable lepers when they came to him. Those who cried out for healing he responded with compassion and healing himself. He even endured criticism for associating with the understood to be sinners of the society. And from the very moment of his birth, he identified himself with the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, and told his disciples, whatever you do, at least to my brothers and sisters, you do for me. When I think about that, to me, that's the essence of the Christian Christmas message. And we never want to lose sight of that. We want to keep it clearly focused in our lives in all, all situations. 
No question. 2020 has been a very difficult, challenging, struggling year for many of us. But that Christian Christmas message remains exactly the same. And it is that same message of hope and confidence in Jesus' love for all of us as people that reverberates in spite of the difficulties that we encounter. Some people, I'm afraid, unfortunately, uh, see the present situation as uh, giving credence to the um, supposedly eighth beatitude in which it's stated, blessed are those who hope for nothing, for they will not be disappointed. That's not the attitude of a genuine follower of Jesus Christ. That leads to a life without hope, very dreary. But what we see in the Christmas message is that there is always that promise of Jesus' presence in our own lives. He told us, I will be with you till the end of time. He remains with us every time we celebrate this beautiful Eucharistic celebration. Every time that we see his presence in one another and try to bring that presence to all. Many things in this world can leave us disappointed, but the Christmas message will never do that. The Christmas message remains true because it has already been accomplished. Jesus has come into the world by his salvific death and resurrection has given us the promise of eternal life. That's the great hope. That's the great promise of our faith that can never, ever be taken away from us. Therefore, in a spiritual sense, we can expect everything and never fear that we will be disappointed because Jesus has come and gives us the promise of eternal life. Stand now, join together in professing our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Even as we celebrate this most joyous day, we know that many here and at, at home and all over the world cannot fully share that joy. We turn now to God with these needs that diminish our, our joy and the joy of others. For the church, may we be a visible sign of God's great love for humanity and in the, in the continuing presence of Jesus in our midst, we pray to the Lord. May the promise of peace and justice for all peoples be realized, especially for those who live in nations at war or in conditions of oppression, we pray to the Lord. For all those who struggle to find food, warm clothing, shelter, heat or employment, that through our Christian desire to offer charity and care, their needs may be fulfilled until the day that the world is free from want, we pray to the Lord. For expectant mothers, may they receive the health care they need and be kept safe from harm as they prepare to bring new life into the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And all of us in this Christian community may share the joy of this blessed day and bring that joy to share with our families, friends, and all our loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For 
all people who serve as officers, first responders all over the world. May St. Michael, their protector, keep them safe from harm and bring them home safely to their families, we pray to the Lord. For all who serve in the military, especially their own parishioners, may God protect them as they serve our country, we pray to the Lord. For all of our deceased parishioners and benefactors who all have recently died, including Deacon Thomas B. Scanlon, and at this Mass, we remember all who have re returned to the Lord during the course of this past year. We pray to the Lord. Close with the uh, blessing for our nativity scene, of course, over here by the Ambo. O God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. O oh Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise us up, raise up thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior of all and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Lord, as we look forward to the coming festivities, may we serve you with all, all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, from the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was ended, took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. For only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Ted and I would like to review with you the safety protocols provided to us by the Archdiocese regarding the safe reception of Holy Communion. The center aisle has been designated into the six-foot increments, and we ask you to observe those as you come forward to Father Moran. We will be serving the Blessed Mother's side first, and we ask you to come pew by pew. The guides will be there to help you to come forward to him. When you come, you're going to come into the box that's directly in front of him. You're going to position your hands so that it's fingers over fingers, creating a palm into which Father can safely drop the host. Then you are to walk to the next box carrying the host, walk to the next box and perform these actions. Lower your mask, consume the host, raise your mask, and then follow the arrows around to your seat. Once the Blessed Mother's side has been served, then we'll start with the St. Joseph's side. The same protocol. Walk out to the middle aisle, come to that box. Once Father has given you your host, walk to the next box, carrying the host. Don't try to lower your mask in front of him or lower your mask as you're walking. Wait till you get to that box to do the three things that we are asking you to do. To lower your mask, consume the host, raise your mask, and then walk around following the arrows to your seat. Uh, if, even if you are not going to receive communion, if you're visiting, perhaps you're not of our Catholic faith, or you don't feel that it's um, uh, uh, wise for you now, uh, safe for you to receive, you still must walk the pew and come out into the main aisle. That is so no one will walk over you or you won't walk over anyone else. If you don't, do not want to receive communion, we ask you to position your hands like this over your heart. That'll be a signal to Father to give you a blessing. And then you would still follow the arrows and go around. Okay. Um, we ask you to position your mask so that it's covering your nose. That is CDC guidelines from the minute you come into the church building until you leave. You must keep your mask covering your nose. Our exiting will be the same. We'll start with the Blessed Mother's side, and the guides will help you pew by pew to walk out the de door. When this side is exited, then we start with the next uh, section of the church. Even if you're sitting on the aisle and you think that you could come out that way, you're going to intersect with someone coming the other way. That would not be safe. That puts you at risk and the other people at risk. So everybody must walk the pew and come out to the center aisle and walk out. We ask for no socialization in the church. That is a archdiocesan rule. And no socialization in the parking lot. Just go straight to your cars. And we thank you for coming today. God bless you.
receive the Lord sacramentally today, we now offer the prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Hey, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking ruin of souls. Amen. Again, I want to extend my best wishes for a blessed Christmas and New Year to all. Off word of thanks to all who have decorated our sanctuary. Tony Minow is our liturgy coordinator and sacristan, all of our guides, all that have uh, facilitated our celebration today under obviously uh, difficult restrictions at time. Gratitude to all of them. To Teddy, our cantors, all of our uh, choir members who have joined together throughout the year. Thank them especially for making the Christmas celebration as nice as we possibly can under all the circumstances. Very much appreciate the beautiful music we had tonight. 
The Mass is ended. Let's go now in peace and joy of Jesus Christ. Thanks,